All right. So, so here's a fun one. And, um, I suspect that we're going to be covering this story a lot. It's sounding like Boeing Starliner may have completely failed. So, you know, this is my normal Boeing sound drop. I'm leaving on a jet plane. I'm leaving. But uh, when we are covering this particular story, um, we're going to go with this. This is ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> And if you if you know the song, you know that doesn't end well for the astronaut. Um, okay, I forgive not, you if that's what you we are. Of course, I forgive you if that's what you them. clipped over Good Point Charles. If that's that what you is, clipped over Good Point Charles, I forgive you. All it's all good. We can go on. That is what I was doing. I was clipping okay. that, and I was like, "Oh <laughs> God damn it! I didn't clip the Charles thing." Um. All right. So this was fun. So there was a lot of reporting on this this week because Ars Technica broke a story with inside sources that, yeah, they're not sending them back on this more than 50 percent chance. It looks like NASA officials might be seeing the writing on the wall for the very troubled Boeing Starliner, which has marooned two astronauts up in space for almost two months due to technical issues. An unnamed informed source told Ars Technica that there is a greater than 50 percent probability that the stranded astronauts will end up leaving the International Space Station on a SpaceX Dragon capsule with another unnamed person telling the news outlet that the scenario is highly likely. Yes, you're reading that right. Elon Musk is going to have to rescue the astronauts. <laughs> burn uh yeah. nasa i'm sure they're all thrilled about that in washington <laughs> uh nasa officials are more cagey about what's happening on the record a marked contrast from previous weeks when they expressed confidence in the starliner's ability to safely bring back the astronauts quote nasa is evaluating all options for the return of agency astronauts Butch Wilmore, best astronaut name ever, by the way, and Sonny Williams from the International Space Station, as safely as possible, NASA spokesperson Josh Finch told ours. No decisions have been made, and the agency will continue to provide updates on its planning. The Starliner project has been cursed from the beginning. With delays and hardware issues during the development and production of the capsule, which has seen Boeing eating something like $1.6 in losses. Despite technical troubles before the launch, NASA went ahead with Starliner's first crewed mission in June. While on approach towards the space station, Starliner experienced helium leaks and issues with its thrusters, forcing NASA and Boeing to delay its return back home with the astronauts so that engineers back on the ground could troubleshoot the problems. Many signs are now pointing towards SpaceX rescuing the stranded astronauts, according to ours. These signs include the space agency giving more than a quarter million dollars to SpaceX for a, quote, special study for emergency response, unquote, and SpaceX actively training for the likely situation of the company sending a Dragon capsule to the space station to bring the astronauts home. If SpaceX does get the green light, expect the Starliner project to be shoved into the proverbial dumpster, according to ours's analysis. It would be a bad look all around because it would mean the American government had funneled a total of $5.8 billion into malfunctioning junk. If this scenario happens, with Starliner not deemed safe enough for human travel, we hope politicians and others investigate what went wrong, given that SpaceX has managed to build the immensely more reliable Dragon capsule at 50% less cost than Boeing spacecraft. What kind of oversight did NASA bring to the Starliner program during its development and production process? That's just one hard question among many. Um, so 
I, I got, I got to say, uh, Tusker, you I, I'd be interested to get your take on all this because on the one hand, Boeing to me in a lot of respects is a story about the absolute failure of capitalism, um, in the mm. way that it ate the regulatory state and also created an environment that encouraged this formerly storied engineering company to basically become a wall street oriented financialized company that maximized profits over safety to the point that the company is, is just hemorrhaging money, stock value, just being destroyed. But then again, uh, you know, if Anne Rand were alive today, she, she'd be praising Elon Musk as the example of all of her ideas brought into practice, right? The individual industrialist who can do it better than the government. So what, what's your take? Well, I mean, number one, I think, I think the entire situation is just hilarious. The fact, cause like, here's, here's the other thing about it. The Russians and Chinese could go get those folks immediately. They don't have to have Elon Musk, like do all this stuff, but what a propaganda that win, like that would be for them, for the Russians and the Chinese. Could you imagine their state media would, they would have this rescue mission They'd make ad promos and all that stuff about it. And it would just be. I mean, I mean if I can, the Chinese I really wanted to troll, they would send yeah. a North Korean rocket. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be even better. Yeah. And just a, 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 like just North Korean anthem the whole way home. That's all you got to listen yeah. to the whole way home. Um, no, that would that would be great. So they can't do that. So then those guys are still going to have to set up there for a little while. Like, fuck the astronauts. We have to save our own face on the geopolitical stage. That's funny to me. Right. Um, but as far as the capitalism thing goes, I think in a lot of ways, it is kind of working just fine. Um, otherwise, why would we even need all that money to the Ukraine war? Because all that's really doing is going back into the pockets of Boeing and all that other type of stuff. Sure. So the Ukraine war is just subsidizing their losses on space tech and flight technology. Meanwhile, they're funneling in the subsidies from the government. Oh, guess what? Now the government's going to spend more money to, to, to help Elon. <laughs> you know, it's going to counter out with Elon. So look, the in private industry just gets money from the government just shoveled out to it no matter what you do. Um, and they still get weapons for war. You know, so yeah, it seems like it's working just fine. Uh, capitalism doesn't really mind as long as its entrepreneurs are making money, you know, doesn't really matter which side it is. Well, see, this is the really interesting thing with Elon. Um, he He's a very good marketer, but at the end of the day, you know, the, he's, he makes these outlandish claims for things that don't get delivered or get delivered mm -hmm. many years later. But on the other mm -hmm. hand, he has built SpaceX into a successful enterprise. Now he's a lot of the mythos around him is that he's an engineer. He's not an engineer himself, but he clearly mm -hmm. hires people who know what they're doing. He knows what he's doing enough. Whereas Boeing now is trying to hire an engineer for its CEO, which it always had in the past, but then they started hiring financial people. They started hiring people with a finance hedge fund background instead of people with an engineering background. That could be part of why ultimately he's not an engineer, but he knows engineering well enough to hire good engineers in a way that Boeing has just gone after the bottom line at this point. Has, has forgotten what, what Boeing's forgot. forgotten. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, in the it, sure, it's a capitalist for profit company within a capitalist for-profit country, but you're not going to make any profit if doors start flying off your freaking planes no. and your and your spacecraft can't deliver the astronauts back to Earth. And what's really funny is, uh, I think it's called uh, Futura. Uh, the magazine did a hilarious article about this. They are very insistent that these astronauts are not stranded. You cannot say oh. that they're stranded. They could go home anytime. We're just running some tests. They're not in any danger. It's fine. <laughs> like, Wait, what was that? Not... What was that special study for emergency response? Emergency response yeah. doesn't sound like it's fine. It sounds like yeah. it's urgent. <laughs> like... They're they're using as evidence that they had them sit in the capsule during a meteor storm that might have destroyed the space station. Well, if it's a choice between that and sitting in the capsule, sure, you'll put them in the capsule. Doesn't mean that capsule will, would actually not burn up on reentry. 
God forbid. I don't mean to make light of it. Of course, right. we pray for these astronauts and their families insofar as our secular asses are capable. Please clap. <laughs>